Uh, Jürgen, first of all, can I get your reaction to Ryan Brewster speaking out about the racist abuse he suffered and also ask what further support the club is going to give him as he looks for the authorities to take action? All the support he needs, he wants. Um, and yeah, all the support you, you can give because um, it's it's quite interesting to, to, to be honest because um, I'm, I'm really long in the, in, the, in, the, in this in this business in the sport and um, I never faced a situation like that and that means to a lot of people then actually I do think it doesn't happen but obviously it happens all the time and um, I really I'm really happy that he is and you need to be brave and that he is brave enough to to do what he did um, because it's such an important thing I, I, I really can't believe that that people have these kind of thoughts still in their mind it's it's so strange in this world and uh, that, that that it happened and obviously we needed a 17 year old boy yeah. I don't know how to say it, to, to shout out to say here it, it's still happening and it happens all the time and um, I need help we need help uh, and we have to to stop that and so I'm we are all really happy about it it's uh, it's not a, a, a situation where you want to be a 17 year old boy in but if it's like this then um, he, he needs help and we give it to him of course obviously we know been able to answer your squad that it will go through on January the 1st with Virgil van Dijk arriving. But when the club spends money, makes such a big money signing like that, what impact does that have on the club's resolve to resist big money offers for your own players? I'm thinking obviously of Philippe Coutinho in that respect. I don't think that's a club problem or whatever. That, uh, um, I'm, I'm surprised about the development in the, in the last two years, let me say. Um, because it was um, there were big steps, and um, but the last half year changed pretty much everything, and um, we cannot, we, we can, as a club, we cannot um, change that. It, it's of course you, you, it's not not each club would be able to do it, but a lot of clubs are able to do it, and they will do it in the future. And it's all about how the market always is. It's about the need and the, the opportunity. So um, if you if you want to sign a player, it's not. Actually, the last thing I think about is the price, to be honest. And it's not because I throw money, I like throwing money um, around. It's, it's only because um, we, are, we are only thinking about a player. And then there's one moment when you, when you get the price and that's already, and then you have to accept it or not. Uh, we did, how I said, we didn't make it. But it's a, it's a big change in, in, in football, of course, in the last few months and, and years. And um, yeah, we have to adapt to it. So that's how it is. That will be changed already, and uh, it doesn't mean that all all transfers will now be in this category. But it's it's the same like it was before. Half a year ago, I think um, it was a big transfer for an offensive player, and now we have a big transfer for a defensive player, and it's around about a third of it. That is how it always was, and um, well, that's it. Not not nice, not nice, but um, that's the. The market that's the world and um, we um yeah we have to adapt to that's how it is so going into the new year do you have new year's resolutions what do you want to see more of from your team what do you want to see less of <laughs> scoring more conceding less easier um and uh, even when i think we played very often um, really well i would like to say that we have we, we still can play more often at our best so it is, and if we are not at our best, we still have to get results. That's that's a few things we we, we are on, we are working on, and um, but so far it's it's not too bad. But um, I think we have enough space to improve. Uh, just, hello again. just as far as January is concerned, about potential outgoings, if not necessarily permanent signings, um, maybe one or two of your players who've been out for a long term. <coughs> Game time, like the like both the Daniels, I suppose. Are there any situations where that could happen, where somebody could either go out permanently or, or on loan from your players? Depends on uh, first. The, the, the first thing we have to make sure is that we have um, the squad we need for the second part of the season, because we had uh, a good situation so far. 
um, in the squad, and that's what we need to have again in the, in the second half of the season. So it's usually you make an agreement for a year. So I know players have longer contracts and, and stuff like that, but you, that's how it is. Everything can happen in, in a big transfer window in the summer. But for, for usually you make an agreement for a year, and the player has the time, has one year time to to train and play that good that uh, it makes sense that he stays here. And for a few young players, it's quite different. To be honest, we, we have to see how, what we do there. Well, with all the rest, it's, um, we will see the, the, the club um, interest is first, 100%. So we need to make sure that we have enough players for different situations. And then we have to think about... Um, we do it actually. The, the perfect situation is that uh, um, it's for both sides really good or, or perfect nearly for the player and the club. But if not, then the club needs to come first. That's how it is. So we will see what happens. So there's nothing decided so far. There are a few. There's interest, of course, in, in, in players of us. But if we agree or not, no decision so far. And as far as uh, Jordan is concerned, I, I know his, his injury he won't be back in the foreseeable future. So I'm just wondering if you've got an official prognosis of when it may or may not be back and um, how big a miss there is a, there is the, there are always prognosis, but they always are between end and uh, it, depend, it depends to um, the, the healing process and, and how, if the player is a quick healer or not. So there's a big difference individual, between the individuals. And um, so, um, yeah, Hendo, I think, starts, for example, starts running outside today which pays and whatever, we will see that, but um, he's on a good way. So I don't want to um, say any date because it would, on the one side, maybe put pressure on him, but what he really doesn't need. And on the other side, it would look like we have not the player not for the next six or eight weeks, and that's not true at all. So we, we, we have to wait. Henry's, I think he's rather a quick healer and um, is on a good way and is desperate to, to be back on the pitch. So um, hopefully not too long. Um, in Jordan's absence, um, Phil took over the captain's armband for the, the, the previous game. But people, you know, the speculation, and everything regarding him and his future. But in terms of, of what he brings to the team, he's showing that energy and that real commitment. And that, with the armband, seems to be on show on the pitch how committed he is to, to the club here and what it's trying to achieve. Even though people are talking about him and with the speculation of linking him elsewhere. I just wondered what your thoughts were. Ah, yeah. I was waiting for the question. No. Okay. I was going to uh, <laughs> that Christmas day. Oh, no problem. Um, I don't want to make the story less romantic, but it was exactly how I said it. After when when, when, I, when Handel was not playing, when Millie was not playing, and I, I need to look. At <laughs> oh, longest servant. Phil Coutinho. That's why he's captain. Maybe I could be smarter and, 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 and think about... Uh, Oh, maybe I give him the armband and he will never leave for him the armband and he's especially happy or whatever. That's not, that's not how it works. Uh, but obviously he deals really well with it because an armband can different things to you. And um, you can feel the lift or the pressure. And um, yeah, he, uh, it didn't disturb him. I think we saw, saw that at least. And um, so it's all good in a moment. That's his... Um, it was a really good moment, to be honest. I'm not sure if the armband has a bit, big influence, but if, no problem with that. But he played very good as well in the last um, couple of weeks, I think, especially um, even when he had, didn't wear the armband. Well, it's just a, uh, an armband and um, not more. It's um, the job, what Hendo is doing, what Milia are doing in the, in, the, in the dressing room for the club. It's, it's a different thing. In the moment when you get the armband in England, everybody tells you afterwards what you have now to do from now on, um, what other players don't have to do. So it's quite a job, uh, but having it on the, on the pitch is um, important, but not in the same way. You play against Leicester, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll go Leicester. Ah, you had asked the question. Yeah. yeah, just your thoughts, obviously, they've had a a changing season where it started one way and uh, picking up a little now. How do you see them as a challenge? On oh, a good way, yeah. They have football playing um, a real development to see. Um, since, uh, at least since Claude Puel is in, uh, they, they change it. You can, you can see that's just the main strength is still the same. So they are good organised and um, incredibly 
threat, incredible threat in counterattacking. So with the speed, with um, Wally, uh, Tim Wally, and um, Mares, and now Gray, properly involved um, in, the, in the first lineup. So that's um, it's really good. Um, it's a experienced team. And so it will be difficult. That that's for, that's for sure. They had, didn't have the results in the last four games, but that means only they are more greedy or desperate, whatever, um, for a result now. And I, I don't think that they make a big difference if they play at Liverpool or, or somewhere else or at home. So they need the points, and so um, that makes the job difficult. But that's how Premier League is. Uh, all teams have quality, and um, especially Leicester. But I think we played them already twice. Um, uh, over 180 minutes, we were 120 minutes the better side. Um, yeah, was it? Yeah, for sure. The, the second half in the in the, in the Carabao Cup was not that good when they scored, but all the all the rest was. We played them really well, but it was with another manager. You're right, and um, so we are aware of the development, but we still want to to win the game, and um, for that. We need to be ready again in this power set a few times. A very intense um, period, but it's for all teams, and so it's a fair competition, and uh, we have to show that we are really ready. And in the way that you kind of, I guess in the summer, you guys made it quite clear that you wanted to hold on to Phil. Do you feel like their sort of position on Mahrez was, was the same? They, he, they had a lot of interest, and in, I guess they've showed the same resolve to, to hold on to their, their big player. To give the answer for that, I need to know much, and needed to much, know much more. About um, the situation already at Mares, so um, he's a fantastic player, to be honest. And uh, I can imagine that a lot of clubs are interested in him, but that he's still there shows that obviously somebody in Leicester convinced him. And um, so, very important player for him, 100%. Anything else, Glenn? Uh, obviously, Moreno, you've said he can't play the next two games, but is there any more update on his uh, condition? So, probably he's the quickest healer in the squad, but um, still not sure he's. Next two games, I think I have to involve the, the the third game as well, and then maybe then we have nine days between Everton and City. I think roundabout. I think that could be the first for him then.